similar in that you can have animations in the house without having to have someone there, but they're simpler. So you've got a turbulent aether barrier. See that? So it looks like this crazy, beautiful barrier of aether gas or aether magic or whatever you want to call it. Uh, we'll delete that too. Go away. We'll get rid of the red color when they range. We don't need that. And so the aether barrier, mm -hmm. I'm deleting all the things I've made. Okay. And much like anything else in, in effects, you can recolor it. So it can be really amazing, you know, looking. Different creative ways for you to do it. There's also a less turbulent version of this. So this is just a turbulent one to show you more dramatically what it does. We've got Aether Mists, which are a little bit harder to deal with because as you can see, their layers, the way that they make it, the mist, as opposed to just Aether, I'm trying to get rid of the, the big one, not this one. The closer you are to something, the bigger the paint can is supposed to be, but I don't know that this, that's working that properly. Um, here we go. Oh, that's still the wrong one. Uh, dealing with the paint cans as opposed to just selecting things is annoying. All right, let's get rid of that. We've got, all right, Aether Mists are like any other mist in this. You'll notice, look at it when you kind of get an angle. It's because the way they make it mist is by layering it with all of these different layers. So the trick is to use it properly so that you don't see it that way. You see it pretty much straight on or close to straight on so you don't see the uh, divisions that make it mist. Aether pools on the ground. This is a really good option for water. In some ways it looks a lot more natural than actual water. The only difference is, is that water in this game, in EHT, actually makes like a splash sort of thing when you go through it. This does not. This doesn't have that kind of effect. But if you want like really kind of peaceful, beautiful water, then aether water is, is aether pools are really cool. Um, you got a turbulent one if you want one too. Dense bubbles. It Dense bubbles has its problems. Not because it looks bad. It looks great but it doesn't layer well because each of these bubbles is actually a square. It's not round. So you'll see if you put an effect behind it, like we'll put a painting or something in, in, in the background. We'll do this painting. Okay it should cut it out into squares. If you're looking at it, it's not competing with it. Hold on, I'll bring that closer. There, ah, you see it? See the squares? So, The, the, the bubbles themselves are squares, but you just don't see the square because it's, it's invisible. It's sort of like an overlay. Uh, so you have to be careful about how you place things so they don't look weird. If you just put it in the middle of nothing, it's going to look fine. If you put it layered, it doesn't always look right. That can be a problem. Let's go back to animations. Um, this is a problem you'll see sometimes that happens to me all the flipping time. I'll be in the midst of trying to play something and I'll mouse over something quickly and suddenly there's another painting down that I didn't mean for that to happen. Uh, you've got falling bubbles. You've got, this is a good one for fish, for fish tanks is in intermittent bus bubbles. But like I said, you gotta be careful about how you place them. Moderate bubbles. 
And then there's sparse bubbles, which are even more sparse. Uh, there's dazzling, which is, I think, new. Uh, you see those popping in out? They have the same problem with the squares. So be careful with them so that they don't end up... This looks really cool, though, doesn't it? If you, like, layer shit like this uh, in terms of, like, fairy dust or bubbles around everywhere, it can look really cool. Uh, having ones go up, some go down... It's like you could be in a star field of this beautiful area. I just, I really like, I really like how it ends up looking. I'm going to delete these so that I can show you more things without it being interrupty McGee. Okay. All right, we're gonna add another one. Okay, so let's do dust. Uh, remember when you add something, it's very hard to see because it's very uh, gray, but we'll make it a brighter color so it's easier to see. Uh, it takes a few moments for it to fall from the sky. It's not instant. So if you think, oh my gosh, there's nothing happening, um, you're wrong. It is happening. It's just really kind of, we'll make them bigger. Uh, it's just really kind of, actually that just increases the space, the area of space where they affect it. But you can see them kind of, I shouldn't make them light, I should make them like red or something. There, now you can kind of see them a little better. This is just floaty dust. Kind of hard to see. Um, you've got an energy beam converging and an energy beam dissipating. Again, all of these can go into your homes without you having to be there for people to see them. So this one I like sometimes to use for, you know, statues, to highlight a statue, but I've seen people use it for, um, it's nice when the people use it for like lasers and stuff. Everglown glyphs look just like the real thing, except this is big. See them? They're kind of smaller, the real ones. Um, the wispy ones. We've got, here, these are supposed to be wisps. Let's see if I can find it after I put it down. There it is. That's huge. You're going to have to definitely um, resize it to be less big, but they move around instead of staying in one place. Looks, looks cool. Um, fairy dust uh, is probably the most used of all effects, I think, because it is identical to torch bugs. Identical. Literally identical. So, and you can dye them any color you want. And people use it all the time because it's just a nice subtle effect. It's really pretty. It doesn't, you know, it, it, it's not the kind of thing that if you don't see it, it ruins it for you. Um, so it's a, just a subtle little addition. You've got fairy fire, which is similar, just more, more of it. Falling ash, I love. Remember, when you add it, wait. Because it's got to come down from the sky to be more natural if that's how it starts. But if you're trying to make an area that's on fire, falling ash can be amazing. Okay. And of course, you can set it to whether you want to be heavy, light, moderate. Fireworks are annoying. <laughs> they work as expected, but they're annoying because they make this popping noise as they go. Let me see where it is. It's like ding, ding. Of course, I don't know where I put it. There it is. Um, 
it'll make a noise when it pops and it's it's not constant it's like a every so often you'll see a firework so you have to put a bunch of them in order to see like a lot but that's and you can dye them whatever color um pinwheel that'll that's another one it's all up here it's hard to see um but you can get the idea and it, it's not like something you can control like how often it goes off or or when it goes off like that it's kind of annoying in that sense um i don't use them for that reason i feel like they're a little bit not as controllable as i might want them to be but i've seen them used well uh zendira has a chinese new year uh house and she uses them and it looks great there's flames which we've worked with before there's jet flames which we've worked with before um really useful in lots of situations you can make them bigger yes i put two of them there we've got geyser which is just water it's it's shooting up oddly but see it it's a little bit of steam and water you can dye that as well like here we'll make it white a little bit easier to see glitter is new this is a new thing that I had I literally I think it came like yesterday or the day before I like it it's like falling glitter exactly what it is we're all gonna leave here with glitter all over all over us cracked ground that's a neat effect because it, it can be used in magical situations and you can dye this whatever color you want These are all animations that the person does not need to be in the house for. Brown cracked glowing. This goes like in and out in color. Like here. This is, makes it a little easier to see. If you did this in like, let's say, orange or red, it could look like maybe you have um, like some hot, something hot underneath burning. I could see using these in different ways. Interstellar space is really good for windows. If you wanna have a window that looks out onto space or the night sky moving, this would be where what I'd go for. Warp drive just goes faster, like sickeningly faster. There's pulsating lasers, which I've seen a lot in when people do um, what kind of home you know like homes both like futuristic but i've also seen them use it for like dance parties um and steady so there's one that's pulsating there's one that's steady there's one of my favorite effects is drifting leaves spiraling leaves drifting leaves here like i said it takes a minute and there they are falling down and you can change them to other colors I have used this in worn off and I think it looks beautiful uh, especially under trees it can just be gorgeous now picture the spiraling leaves um, same thing but picture under ginkgos suddenly you have petals and not just uh, leaves falling see the pink pink are the spiraling ones so you can make the leaves into falling petals so I think that can be really beautiful as well one of my other favorites is apocrypha isn't that amazing it's just paper like a maelstrom of paper I thought for the longest time that somebody had animated this I didn't realize it was a simple effect and it can be really awesome in magic-y rooms, like rooms full of, you know, magic gone awry. Um, that can be awesome. Magical circle. You can see this used on, like, sometimes people use it on buttons. 
to draw attention to the fact that there are buttons. I've seen people use it, because you can make it really small. Um, I've seen people use it on DJ tables to make things stand out. But like I said, you can make it really friggin' small, so you can make it the size of a button. See? All you do is you move with the, you move things with the, the mouse. You use the arrow keys and there you go. Beautiful. Meteor shower, pretty much what you'd expect. Got to give it a second. I think it, this one, is, yeah, there it is. See it? Kind of a crazy meteor shower, but there you go. Shooting stars, similar, but less, less of them. Um, smoke. I've used this um, to show things that are burning, obviously. I think we it's kind of amazing how dark it would make it but you can make this any color and I've seen people use it to make some really fantastical looking like imagine this is a potion right and it's swirling up there's so many different ways that you could use this just make it small enough so it looks like it's coming out of the top of a beaker and suddenly you have a very magical potion that's going crazy Sonar rings. I think that's pretty obvious. Same thing. You need to put it. I think it looks good on machinery, but you can do what you want. Exploding sparkles are literally just. I don't know if you can really see it too well here, but. Literally just exploding park sparkles. You can kind of see the, the remains of the sparkles coming down. But then you have moderate and sparse. Falling sparkles is similar. Just comes straight down instead of popping out. Sparks are hard to see. You need to, we'll do them in their separate areas, sparks. Okay, so then we'll make them a different color so you can see them even better. Some red or something. And down they come. Those are sparks, although they're from this angle, they don't look right. There they are. You gotta just, you know, try different things. Sparks are the kind of thing that just float around in the air a little bit, so you might be able to use fairy dust and have it work better. Star cluster is exactly what it says that is. You can change the colors of everything, remember. Star cube. I don't really know why this is a cube. It doesn't look like a cube to me, but whatever. It looks more like a field of them. We're really just adding up all these effects now. I said, oh no, that's, that's something else. Um, Star Trio. Steam. Steam is useful. Different speeds of steam. Uh, time rift. Time rift unstable. Void of Sithis. I've never used. I, it's not really animated. It sort of just sits there. Vortex. You'll often see people use this um, in water. Reverse, you can go either way. Although they're competing. You gotta be careful of layering. Sometimes they'll cut each other out. Water spout just spits up. It's a lot like geyser, but without steam as much. And then over here we've got Whirlpool, which you will almost, I mean, this is probably one of the most used effects that I've ever seen. So those are the animated ones. Um, we're not going to get into a lot more, but I will say that um, so some of the sigils are animated, like 
some of them spin. I'm trying to find the, the animated ones so you can see what I'm talking about. I forget which ones are spinny. But this is another way of discussing the fact that, you know, you can mouse over and see what you want. You don't have to worry about um, placing them and removing them if you just want to see. Okay, so here's one invocation and then you just change the colors to whatever you want them to be but and they they kind of go bright then dark and bright and dark but it's it's a really cool trick some of these are all animated best way to know what's available to you is just mess around with it um the skies can be animated let's real quick just look at one because i've done skies before but ocean of stars is animated so as you can see it's got stars sparkling and some of the the meteors are showing up isn't that funny that's not part of it that's its own effect that I didn't clean up but that's ocean of stars the way that it animates in and out you can see darkness and then weather weather is also animated in a way aether shower Looks like lasers are pooping on you or something. Chilled air rises up from the ground. This is good for a graveyard or something. Cinder storm I have used in a place on fire. Isn't that beautiful? It's actually stunning. It's when used properly for a, like, a, I had a Bosmer city on fire. It was just beautiful. The way that it worked together was just stunning. So I really like Cinder Storm. I would suggest using it. I use fog all the time. We've got dense, drifting, light, moderate. Dense can be really cool. Again, awesome for um, graveyards and whatnot. But also you can change it to sickening colors. Like maybe it's a poison fog, right? And that's sick. Really weird. I like it. Um, and then a lot of these are pretty obvious rainfall. But there's also a funnel cloud, which uh, you be, need to be aware that it, depending on what place you're standing, it doesn't look right. Like if you're standing from the side, see it's made with bunches of different clouds, so it looks odd. But if you get it from the right angle, it puts itself together to be a proper there, funnel cloud. So what I would suggest is, you know, make it small. Like, don't make it as tall as it starts out. Um, and just be aware of when you're using it and where you're using it. Because it can just, it can work well or it can look like crap. There's also snowfall. So this was one of the best parts of, of uh, EHT is that you can add weather snow rain ashes i mean it looks like it's friggin death over here but you get the